we're going to be dealing with something that's quite difficult. Secondary history teaching is a complex business with multiple approaches. In this programme, we've gathered together a group of respected educators and historians to discuss some of the issues around history teaching. The group consists of Tristram Hunt, academic historian and broadcaster, Christine Council, Cambridge senior lecturer and editor of Teaching History, Roz Ashby, lecturer and researcher at the Institute of Education, Ben Walsh, history teacher and author, and Jonathan Howson, a history teacher in London. They have just watched one of Jonathan's Year 11 lessons concentrating on second-order concepts, in which pupils used archive sources to test a well-known hypothesis about Kennedy's handling of the Cuban Missile Crisis. It's a real case of Khrushchev, it's your move or the end of the world. There were two key things that stood out, I think, from the lesson. One is uh, treating the children as grown-ups. And I think the other aspect of it was that uh, the knowledge, the substantive knowledge that you were giving them, you were demonstrating that it isn't static knowledge, mm. that actually they can engage with this and that the whole issue of history is that it's partly a debate about mm. the past, mm -hmm. partly a debate about its significance and mm. how we interpret it. I strongly agree with both those points, and I was struck by how engaged those students were, mm. uh, and that was remarkable and really, really exciting. And I'm sure if there were teachers watching watching this, they might say, oh, that's exciting, that's worth aspiring to, but how did he do it? Yeah. And of course, the answer to that how I know is going to be not just in that lesson, but it's going to be in all sorts of things about classroom culture, about how you built it up over time, because these were youngsters who present all kinds of challenges, I'm quite sure, mm. and in less capable, less skillful hands might not be so mature. And I really wanted to ask you, Jono, if you were how did you get them to treat that material so seriously? You have to have a depth of knowledge about the subject to begin mm -hmm. with. Mm -hmm. I also think you need to have, um, because it, it directly translates into the classroom, you have to have a, um, a passion about mm. uh, and a commitment to what you're, what you're delivering. And not only that too, but they have to understand that they're, the context within which this is being delivered mm -hmm. They have to see that this is this is relevant to their lives yes. today. That engages them to be involved. I, th I think this is very interesting. The combination of passion and authority mm. is what gets people interested and what mm. gets viewers. You can't just have passion. You can't just be dry no. and authoritative. No. No. It's the combination of the two to, to draw people in. I mean, I think what I particularly enjoyed about the lesson, and it's a, I think it's an interesting debate at the moment, is that so much of it was was almost a lesson in citizenship. Uh, and political engagement and political literacy. Because they can't uh, be separated. No, exa exactly. And I think in some of the citizenship debates going on at the moment about the curriculum, this sort of side of history, as if this hasn't been taught, yeah. you know, and this hasn't been a vital part of, of historical knowledge. And it, it was all there. I mean, out of that lesson, I saw it became a much more engaged, critical, involved citizenry. What I would point to is the way in which you... Um, simply assumed there was no question that your students would not be able to handle the, this this sort of uh, really quite challenging material you know original documentary um, sort of footage it was also uh, you know some 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 materials right out of the archives these were minute papers weren't they mm -hmm. that, that Kennedy was on the text of the speech um, too and everything. that's right and these are not written in simple straightforward language no. uh, at mm -hmm. all um, and and yet you you sort of gave no hint to the students you you almost gave them no opt-out uh, there is an overarching theme which isn't actually stated but which is implicit in the whole thing is is much more one of um, where where do these students place themselves in the world today as a result mm. of this kind of knowledge mm. and I think if somehow you can do that then it immediately becomes relevant and current if yes. you can't do that then you often will have an uphill struggle and this is just a health warning not an exercise in simply finding extremes you can have a situation where an action that's been undertaken is both brave and unwise. I think probably what was important was actually the upfront yeah. teaching. Jonathan set the parameters and he set those extremes. It wasn't going to allow the children just to sit yeah. in, you know, good, bad, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, hero or villain, yes. and all those sort of crudities that exist. Mm -hmm. He mapped on that grid all those ways in which, the complex ways in mm -hmm. which 
and he, he spoke of a continuum. So the, um, the children were allowed to unpack that yeah. across the Wasn't it terrific, areas. though, when they just ever so slightly threw you by changing the shape of the continuum? Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Fantastic, because yeah. you had something that didn't go across that way. It went diagonally <laughs> instead. I love the way you use the and, uh, negative <laughs> constructively. But basically, yeah. you told them, this is what I don't want. Yeah. OK? <laughs> we're ruling this out of the discussion and then <laughs> shaped and dis disciplined their discussion because they were highly disciplined, I thought, across the yeah. lesson. Mm -hmm. And that was because of the framing you gave them. So they were not allowed just to drift into flights of fancy. You also address this question of uh, the, the right or wrongness mm. of, of the American position, mm. which, uh, and, you know, if nothing else sort of uh, comes across from, from this lesson, is you didn't have to do that mm. for your exam course. Yes. And yet, by you know, which, which was the bit you'd drop? You know, you wouldn't drop that, would you? To get students actually engaging with this idea, should they have done that? Mm. You know, is, is worth... But can't they write more powerfully than in, on any number of issues as a result of that? Or potentially can't they write more powerfully as a result of having looked at something like this? Because then doesn't that become a focus for their whole understanding of the whole Cold War and in anything that they'll write about. One of those sentences from one of those boys about lionising capitalism was a beautiful, yeah, you know, an in, 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 in incredible yeah. sentence. Yeah. Um, and I think you it's almost part of the richness and reward of history is the mm. writing of it. Mm. Um, and and it, 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 it can't all be sort of uh, gobbits and mm. bits of analysis of things that you've, you've got to bring it together, Absolutely. I think. This is why we've seen you know, such a revival in extended writing in school history, because I mean, that mm. passion's very much shared. The, the one danger of a sort of perhaps purely skills-based focus was to drift into the, the, the gobbit instead of joining things up and constructing argument and developing debate. And we, we've now got a range of pedagogies which explore that. And I think it's widely accepted, actually, that to write is to think, uh, and to think is to write, that you often need that scribbling process to form your thoughts. Mm. I think what history gives you is something to argue about about. It also gives you a body of um, prior models mm. where somebody has argued about. Yes. So you can actually take the article from the 1962 encyclopedia on something and compare it with yeah. um, no, you know, a, a more up-to-date yeah. account mm. which, which has slightly different nuances, I for think instance. I Michael yeah. teaching them the excitement of history. Mm. Ideally, you want to end up with the quote-unquote right answer, but mm. what is important is you, you know, you take a stand, mm -hmm. you yeah. argue it, you know, conclusively, you draw on the evidence and, mm -hmm. and you, take, you take the reader uh, along with yeah. you and you end up somewhere different from where you began. And, mm -hmm. you know, if it's got that, then I'm, I'm very happy. This is, this is part of his performance. I mean, his performance during the Cuban Missile Crisis focused around what he did on television. But we're still skirting around the, 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 the core issue, which I'm trying to get at. Time is always mm -hmm. is, is always an issue, and what we have to be careful as teachers is to avoid the trap of saying, have you done Afghanistan this week, have you done Poland, yeah. so that it doesn't become an exercise in just simply delivering curriculum as quickly as possible. It also yeah. means hard choices have to be made. Absolutely. Which means that a teacher will, I think, quite defensively say, well, I need to get some sense of overview here, but there are many kinds of overview, mm -hmm. and I'm going to have to plump for this because I've got an hour a week, mm -hmm. and I've got to make hard choices about how to move these children forward on all fronts. Um, and I think that's why things do get left out out for good reason. Because you cannot include in a school history syllabus everything that ever ever happened everywhere that you can possibly no. imagine and everybody's favourite thing. But what you can give is you can give children a framework of understanding for lifelong learning mm. and that history teaching then and history understanding does not stop when people leave the classroom. Well I thought that was the excellence of the, of the lesson because mm. hopefully all those kids will be looking at the sort of you know, Iraq war memos and, the, mm. you know, the, the Bush Blair stuff and all the rest and thinking, well, hey. At, at the big scale, it seems to me that ultimately it, it's, it's ambition that, that comes out. You, you're ambitious that, that, um, that this process doesn't become grad grind. Let's, is it this, if it's the 19th, it must be Poland. Um, you're also ambitious for the students, you know, for, for, um, for, for students sort of who from, from that background, you know, it would be so tempting to sort of say, oh, well, I'd, I'd better keep it simple, and, and you, you know, you clearly didn't. Um, I don't feel I have to, you see. Well, but yeah. that's the point, isn't it? There is this temptation to, to, to sort of under-challenge because yeah. we don't want to threaten yeah. uh, But students. does that come from this fear um, of, um, of this fear of differentiating and then differentiating, reading, dumbing down, and then as opposed to saying with uh, in addressing something like a second order concept that has many gradients and many levels of progression mm -hmm. that that by keeping the whole discussion high you still will drag everybody along at some level. I, I suspect in fact that, that it's actually more to do with um, 
the, the, the complex business of, of managing the big thing that you're trying to achieve, mm. but also being aware of the small steps. And that longer, mm. term, that longer term understanding of what you're trying to achieve with mm. the children does allow you actually to differentiate within a class. Yeah. Just in terms of the question you might ask or you might notice one child can fly with mm. the ideas that you've perhaps got in mind for several lessons later. Whereas with other children, there you are, you think, I'm going to have to do something now that's actually going to reinforce mm. and consolidate this understanding here while I've got to deal with this one who's ready to, to move forward. But and part the of the juggling yes. Yes. Of, of the inter kind of interventions that the teacher is making all the time. But you can't do that without the sequence of lessons and the long-term goals in mind because you don't know where you're taking them next. And if you've, you can find you've articulated something that I don't, I don't actively think about because when I do think about how I prepare lessons and how I teach, I, I never actually think on lesson by lesson. Mm -hmm. I always try and think of a longer time span and, and a, even a mini scheme of work within a scheme of work. I try mm -hmm. and think of things over you know, four, five, six lessons because I, I can't help but feel that to make any kind of progress, that progress has to be a gradual process of change. Mm -hmm. But I never ever think in single lessons. Mm -hmm. Teachers often say, don't they, oh, how do I know, should I have departed from my lesson plan or shouldn't I have departed from it, which is best? But it seems to me that, that you exemplified very helpfully there what it is that can help you make those judgments in that you were paradoxically very clear about what you wanted to achieve. Mm -hmm. You're very, very clear about your second order area that you yes. wanted to explore, very clear about its relationship with substantive content. Mm -hmm. And because you're so intellectually clear about where you're going, you can make the small judgments. Mm -hmm. yes. You know, I think I'll give some latitude there, that's worth running with. Yeah. And, oh no, I think I'll let that go. But you can't, so I mean, that's the paradox. Plan it well and then you can yes. depart from the plan. Yeah. Kennedy, during the Cuban Missile Crisis, acted out of a desire to seem strong to lionise capitalism and demonise communism. Uh, Kennedy's actions were uh, clever and well thought out because they left the decision on what Khrushchev played. But his personal vendetta with Khrushchev led to actions that would not be diplomatically wise. Very good, thank you very much. One of the things that I find most exciting from that lesson and from all kinds of other similar practice that I'm seeing around the country is that, that there are children here who may not go on to do even History A-level, possibly not even History at GCSE, who nonetheless can engage in these processes, can acquire a voice, can develop a critical understanding, can get excited about issues of identity and others' identity. So really, for me, what is particularly exciting is this question of inclusion. And, and that's an area where I think we've moved forward in history education. What I certainly valued from it was, was the citizenship and the political literacy. And again, mm -hmm. even if they don't continue, from that class, from that course, uh, I think they've understood an incredible amount about the nature of power, uh, the nature of imagery, and you know the nature of America in the 20th century, which you know, is so vital today. Mm -hmm. Many students, I think, get a very um, packaged version of the past with neat sources and photographs arranged and I just so much enjoyed, I'm sure you do use textbooks as well, but it was just so nice to, to also see um, students within that examination course working with the rough edges of history, with, with archive film, rough looking photocopies, you know, once in a while I think just to be honest with students and say, this is where the history comes from, this is where the nice textbook started out, and sometimes I think it's a good idea to look at the building blocks of history. In many ways, he's not just engaged in a practical activity, he's actually engaged in an intellectual activity, mm. and that's both at the level of intellectual engagement with history, but also intellectual engagement with how people learn, how children learn. Yeah, I know that if, if you have that sense that what you're delivering is not simply an exercise in managing curriculum, but it's actually something that's going to help all these people, uh, all these students in their, in their lives, uh, whether or not they take history. Um, if it gives them some currency in the world that they live in, then that can't be a bad thing. For access to the full discussion, go to www.teachers.tv.